Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at how to use Cloudflare with Blob Storage on Microsoft Azure. Today we're going to be looking at Cloudflare and what it can provide for a website hosted on Microsoft Azure. So what I'm going to be talking about today is similar to what we talked about last time when we talked about Azure CDN. And Azure CDN allows us to have a front end for our Azure websites hosted on Blob Storage and Cloudflare can do something similar to that. So what I'm going to do is create a Cloudflare account and it's going to serve as a CDN in much the same way that Azure CDN did, but it also adds some value added services that I wouldn't be able to get out of the box with just a simple uh, front end like a CDN provides. It can also do a number of other services like domain name services. So I can register a domain and then let Cloudflare handle my DNS domain parking. And uh, this allows me to have a full control over my DNS records, but also have tight integration with the Cloudflare platform and all the services that it offers. It also serves as a reverse proxy, and we looked at this concept last time when we looked at a CDN, but basically it allows me to have a single point of entry uh, for my website or multiple points of entry for my website, and those proxy my backend website by a point of presence on the internet. And this allows me to do things like load balancing and other things across that uh, set of servers or that single server in the back end. It also provides the ability to do custom SSL and transport layer security. However, you can get this out of the box with Cloudflare as well. And having this available on Cloudflare or lets you have secure communication between your clients and your point of presence on the internet. It also has some additional security features like a web application firewall, which is a firewall that's intended for web apps to prevent things like SQL injection or cross type scripting attacks or other similar type uh, threats that might emerge for uh, HTTP based applications. And it also pr provides a lot of protection against distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks on the internet. And uh, this is a becoming a big nuisance on the internet where a set of distributed hosts that have viruses or some kind of malware uh, on them will orchestrate a attack against a single web server by overwhelming that server with requests. And um, these botnets, as they're called, have a command and control server that says, I want to bring down X website. And if that website only has a single point of entry on the internet, then what the distributed denial of service will do is attempt to bring that that web server to its knees by flooding it with requests and so no other, no other requests can get in. But Cloudflare and Azure CDN for that matter, what they what it does is it globally distributes the load of a particular website across a whole set of servers and points of entry on the internet. There are literally dozens of those for Azure and Cloudflare alike. And we're going to be looking at Cloudflare in particular and how you can configure Azure to use Cloudflare today. But a brief review of what we looked at last time, we looked at uh, how Azure CDN uh, proxied a website, and we had Azure over here, say, somewhere in the United States. But instead of using Azure CDN, we're going to use Cloudflare today, and we're going to imagine that Cloudflare is in uh, the uh, European continent in Western Europe. And I have a client somewhere in Eastern Europe that wants to request content from my website. So it's first going to go to a DNS server, which is going to be Cloudflare in this case, and it's going to get an IP address for that request. And then it's going to get that, make a HTTP request against that Cloudflare uh, IP address. And then what Cloudflare is going to do is go fetch that content from the source, which is my origin server, which is on Azure. And then it's going to pull that back and then cache it on the Cloudflare server. And then do also uh, deliver that content back to the uh, requesting client in Eastern Europe. Now this proxying scheme works really well uh, whenever you have a a geographically located client that is far away from the origin. And what this allows the client to have is quicker response times from the origin because the content is cached. The only person that gets penalized really for being far away is the original 
a request, the user the first request of a given uh, resource, and then every other request after that would then be cached. So in the instance of this client in North Africa wants to make a request, it would then go to Cloudflare and Cloudflare would simply do the DNS resolution and then that same client would then request the same resource from Cloudflare and, and it would return a cache copy of that rather than going back to the origin and that round trip is much quicker. I'm here in the Azure portal. I want to show you how I set up Azure uh, blob storage hosting a static website to work with Cloudflare. So the first thing I need to do is change some of the configuration in this if it's already turned on. In this case, I need to go to the configuration and disable secure transfer. Now I'm going to re-enable this later on so I will have a secure channel. But for uh, starters, I'm going to disable this and we're going to come back to the uh, portal here for Azure after I work with Cloudflare for a moment. But once I have that disabled, hit save and that will save those changes. Now, once I have that done, I can go back to Cloudflare or, and uh, what I did with Cloudflare is I registered a new domain called blaze.xyz. I registered it through GoDaddy. There are other domain registries out there such as Namecheap or or one of those network solutions. There's, just, there's several. Uh, I didn't particularly care which one I used. Just pick one and, and register a domain. And um, once I had that domain registered, I changed its name servers to use Cloudflare Cloudflare's name servers. Now, the reason I had to uh, register a new domain rather than use blaze.net, my canonical n domain name, is because Cloudflare requires that you use their name servers to integrate with all their services. So with that case, uh, with that in mind, I have this registered and I went through the process by going through add site or clicking add site here. And then that will give me the, the name servers that I need to associate within my registry for my given domain name. So inside of my uh, domain name uh, I had it originally associated with GoDaddy I went and changed the name servers to these two as instructed by Cloudflare and then um, once you save that it takes it a while for it to propagate across the domain name services and for that to be associated with Cloudflare and once that's done then I can start to change make changes within Cloudflare for my given domain name now, once I have this all set up, what I can then do is go into the DNS records and create some uh, DNS records that I want to use for my static website. In this case, uh, uh, my, I'm going to use www.blaze.xyz. Um, I set a C name uh, here, uh, blaze.xyz. This is my root, and I went add record and then use the ampersand for root, and then that points to blaze.xyz, and I use a C name rather than an A record to point to this domain here. Now this is the domain that's associated with my static hosting account, which is if you come down here to a static website, I got that host name from this right here, this primary endpoint for the static website. You can also use this just for blob storage if you're not actually hosting a website as well, but you would have to use the blob storage endpoint, not the static host endpoint. So once I had that configured, I added another CNAME record, www, that's a subdomain under blaze.xyz, and pointed it to the same uh, record for the content here. And I did for blog as well, but you don't have to do these two extra ones. You can really just do the root. And if you want www, you can have that one as well. And once I had those saved, I turned the proxy status from proxy to originally would look like this, or if I add a new one to uh, proxy status to DNS only, to DNS only. And the reason I need to do this is so that whenever Azure saves the uh, records when I go to change it, I'm gonna update it something in a minute, it will resolve that this domain name is associated with this uh, domain name from Azure, and it will allow me to save it. So I'm gonna turn that back to proxy in a minute, and I'll tell you why. But once I have these records in my DNS settings in Cloudflare, I can come back over here to 
my Azure portal and come down here to custom domain. Now inside of this custom domain, I, I supplied it the domain that I want to use with this particular uh, host. In this case, I wanted to use www.blaze.xyz associated with this particular storage account. And notice that it says, create a CNAME record for, for your DNS provider that points to your domain, like what I did here, to either the blob storage account uh, host name or the uh, static website host name. And that's a exactly what I did here so that it would validate that this is actually pointed to to this record. The other thing that you can do is do this option here and I can do uh, AS verify through um, as verify dot published dot z20 web core windows dot net um, subdomain and it would work as well. So even one, either one of these approaches would work. I chose to use this one and just have it the C name associated with this particular um, domain here because that's the static website that I'm hosting. So once I had that um, supplied here, I hit saves. It might have to hit it once or twice. It might get an error that can't associate it. Usually if you hit it a second time, it will save. Now, once I had that saved, I could then um, have my domain name associated with the uh, storage account here. Now, um, I can also come back up here while I'm at it, come back over here and re-enable secure transfer and hit save as well. It might error out that it can't verify it, but it did save it there. It says it'll take up to 30 seconds for this to take effect. Now, once I have this saved, I have require, I'm requiring that SSL be uh, present in order for content to come back from this website rather than only accepting content by way of clear text. So once I have those changed in the Azure portal, I can then come back over here here to uh, Cloudflare and then re-enable proxy on my DNS entries here. So what that will do then is rather is proxy that website through Cloudflare rather than just do a DNS lookup against that record that I created here. And that way I, it will take advantage of all of the security features that Cloudflare adds to uh, my website, such as the web application firewall and the distributed denial of service protection and other such things as that. And once I have that, I can then uh, have these uh, proxying my website, I can come over here to SSL and TLS. Now, by default, um, the SSL connection is usually off on a website, but you can you want to turn that to full. Um, and this will basically enforce the SSL connection from the proxy on Cloudflare to the back end, which is on Azure. Uh, blob storage. So it will use SSL to communicate with blob storage and then it will then uh, uh, do SSL offloading for my domain on the Cloudflare. And out of the box on most Cloudflare uh, levels of subscription, even the free one that I'm using here, uh, you get an SSL certificate that you can use with your domain. It's just a wildcard certificate that's associated with your domain. So in this case, uh, it's using uh, star.blaze dot xyz or blaze dot xyz it's a universal certificate that will work uh, with all the proxies that i have available here so once i have that set up and i have that domain set up then i can then have end-to-end -end, uh, uh, encryption from my browser to Cloudflare, then from Cloudflare to my published site. And once that uh, is turned on with full, I can come over here and then do a request against my website on a, on a fully uh, uh, encrypted channel uh, back to my post here if I went to the, the, register, to the, to the root. Um, that's what that looks like. And I can go to any of my posts and it's pulling that ba back by way of uh, HTTPS to the browser, but it's getting that from the original uh, origin, which is on Azure Blob Storage. So this little configuration here allows me to have a, a custom domain against a Azure Storage backend that allows me to have a free SSL certificate have and have a lot of extra security added to it just by using Cloudflare. So this is one option for 
uh, hosting on uh, Azure. It doesn't have to be blob storage. I just use blob storage in this case, and it allows me to have that static website that has SSL in front of it using my own domain name and a, and a certificate that works that I didn't have to pay for, or register, or import like I did when I was using Azure CDN. So it's a different approach. It has a very similar outcome like Azure CDN, except this one I'm just using Cloudflare. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.